to the sports beat. I'm Nick Hamilton, back at you again. Some interesting topics to discuss, so let's get into it. We're going to talk a little college football, a little NBA, a little NFL. First things first, I definitely have to talk about the Cam Newton allegations situation with Florida, Mississippi State, and Auburn. This has got to be the biggest smoke cloud I've ever seen. Allegations are supposedly Cam Newton cheated on a couple of tests back in Florida. He supposedly received or uh, obtained stolen property, which happened almost two years ago at a completely different university. Before he was supposed to come up before the student commission, he checked out, went to a junior college, did one year at junior college, looked around at other colleges, and decided to go to Auburn. So, all of a sudden, now that he's a Heisman candidate, playing well, number two team in the country, all of a sudden, these allegations come out, which tells me, how did they get out? Urban Meyer says, who's the coach of Florida, oh, I don't know how they got out. They mysteriously got out. Mississippi State doesn't know how it gets out either. To me, this sounds like an ex-girlfriend scorned. When you break up with somebody and all of a sudden those memories or those pictures or that special letter gets out and you go to her and to confront her and all of a sudden it's like, oh, I don't know how it got out. Urban Meyer, do you honestly expect us to believe that you had absolutely nothing to do with this, the information getting out. Please stop insulting our intelligence. We're not stupid. Maybe that may take place down there in Gainesville, but in the rest of the country, us as college football fans and supporters and elitists, we're not going for it. Sorry, it's not going to fly. Cam Newton is eligible on the field as well as academically. So, Whoever has a Heisman vote does not vote for this guy if he continues to have an outstanding season, then you need to turn your card in because this guy is the truth. He is playing exceptionally well. He hasn't been in any trouble. And now the new allegations are him and his father accepted anywhere from $180,000 to $200,000 in order for him to attend Auburn. To me, this is nothing like the Reggie Bush situation. Because number one, I don't see I didn't see Pete Carroll come to Reggie Bush's aid. I didn't see Reggie Bush jump out in front of the story when the allegations were first made about USC and him taking improper benefits. So this tells me when your coach who who's the head coach of Auburn comes out and says, you know what, I believe Cam Newton, he has done no wrong, he's done everything that they they have asked him to do while he's been at the Auburn University. That's enough. That speaks volumes. So, good luck, Cam. I hope you have a phenomenal season. I definitely hope you win the Heisman. If I had a vote, you'd get my vote, definitely. Um, anybody else that has a problem with that is ridiculous. All it is is sour grapes because Florida is losing and Urban Meyer can't take a losing season. And Mississippi State is absolutely horrible. So you're going to jeopardize Auburn possibly getting into the national championship with all these distractions, which brings 18 to $21 million to the SEC conference. Way to go. Next up, we're going to talk a little NBA. Now, the craziest thing I've heard uh, when it comes to the Lakers, people always ask them, what team do you think will win? What team do you think will beat the Lakers? What team can match up? I heard one reporter actually have the audacity to say that the Boston Celtics are the only team that can beat the Lakers. Kind of asinine if you ask me. How can they beat the Lakers when they don't have a deeper bench? Shaq is a broken down hobble. The only bigs you have are Kendrick Perkins and Jermaine O'Neal. Well, we have bigs too. We have Al Gasol. We have Lamar Odom, and then when Bynum comes back and he's healthy, 
when a healthy bottom is in the picture, it's a win-win. Now, as far as the Miami Heat, and they, their lack of bigs, because we absolutely know that Chris Bosh hates to play the five. He stands around the basket. The guy looks completely out of place. And when you're going up against a seven-game series against the Boston Celtics with all their bigs, I don't see them winning that series. I barely see you winning the Orlando series, and they just have to contend with Dwight Howard. Orlando, to me, is a distant three. Unless they make a trade for Carmelo Anthony out of Denver, they're not going to be a top contender. Orlando fans may hate me, but hey, I'm just being real. You know as well as I do that besides Dwight Howard, who do you really have? Rashard Lewis is a streaky shooter. Vince Carter plays lackluster and he's lost a step. So who else would you have? Jameer Nelson against who? Dwayne Wade? We know Dwayne Wade wins that matchup all day long. So you have the two teams in the East between Boston and Miami. Yeah, it'll be another Lakers-Boston series. That's just my prediction, but hey, what do I know? The surprising team in the NBA right now are the New Orleans Hornets. Despite the controversy between over the summer between Chris Paul debating if he wants to be traded or not be traded, the trade that they made with Houston to, to acquire Trevor Ariza and new head coach Monty Williams seems to be working pretty well. The players seem to be buying into Monty Williams' system, and they've been playing collectively and actually the other night beat the Miami Heat, which was actually surprising. So my prediction in the West, Lakers definitely number one spot. Number two spot to me would definitely have to be Oklahoma City. Third, Utah, fourth, New Orleans, fifth, maybe Denver. Six, seven, and eight is wide open. And no, I don't see San Antonio making it past the first round. They're old. They're outdated. No way. But then again, stranger things have happened. But I don't see anybody beating the Lakers but themselves. Again, if they can sit, if they can maintain their health and cont continue that consistency, then they're definitely going to be three-time champions, bottom line. Let's talk a little NFL. Now, everybody knows about the whole Randy Moss situation, him being waived, coach not telling the other players, and the Tennessee Titans seem to be the only team that picked him up off waivers. Well, it's just Moss being Moss. Let's be honest. If you go back to when he played for the Minnesota Vikings, he had, Randy Moss is the kind of player that has to have discipline. You cannot have the inmates run the asylum. If you look at the Minnesota Vikings, when he played with Chris Carter, he, and had Dennis Green as his head coach, he was very disciplined. You didn't hardly get any problems out of him. When they left is when the problems started. Then he was shipped off to Oakland. We all know how the Oakland Raiders are. The inmates run the asylum. So what does Randy do? Follow the lead. Then he gets traded to New England with Coach Bill Belichick and Tom Brady and a whole bunch of veterans who play in a particular system, who are disciplined, who believe in giving 100%, and they weren't standing for anything. Coach Belichick is a very disciplined coach, and that's why you didn't hear a peep out of Randy those seasons that he played in New England. Now all of a sudden he gets traded to Minnesota. Once again, the inmates run the asylum. You see where I'm going with this? Now, he gets waived. Now, he's with Coach Jeff Fisher and the Tennessee Titans, who Jeff Fisher is a definite disciplinarian. So, I doubt very seriously that you'll see any nonsense out of Randy Moss. If he can keep his mouth shut and keep his talk on the field, Randy, you will go a long way. You are too old not to know better. There are certain things that you can say and you cannot say. And you know the media is watching. You know everybody is looking at you. Waiting for that one mistake or that one mess up. So let's have a productive rest of the season. You have eight games to go. Tennessee is definitely the driver's seat for the playoffs. And can possibly steal the AFC South over the Indianapolis Colts and the Houston Texans. 
So we'll see. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is Jerry Jones. And how long did it take you to figure out that good old Wade was not going to cut it in Big D? I, I'm not even a Cowboys fan. But it doesn't take a blind man to figure out the players quit. Probably in week three or week four. Wade is not the guy. And it finally took Jerry Jones weeks, a 1-7 record, which is almost the second worst record in the National Football League behind the Buffalo Bills, to finally realize, geez, I can't take another shellacky. And the guys absolutely quit. Now, you can't solely blame Wade Phillips because the players are the ones out on the field. And they had a lackluster performance. I never thought I would see the day that DeMarcus Ware, an absolute stud on the defensive end, refused to play with any kind of intensity and heart like he's played in previous seasons, who, who, who has become the beast that he is. Absolutely appalling. So good old Wade is gone. But you know what, Jerry? You shouldn't have stopped firing there. You should have fired yourself as general manager and president and just remain the owner and step back. Hire somebody that you trust to fill the GM and the president slot and step back and be an owner. Because I guarantee you, no top-notch coach is going to come to Big D and coach these guys up. And you have a hand puppet on. I'm sorry, did I say that? You have a head assistant head coach who's now the interim coach in Jason Garrett, who to me, I don't see him doing a miracle in the next eight games, not with Tony Romo out basically for the season. And John Kidna, oh yeah, that's a top-notch quarterback. He's going to, going to pull you through some wins. No, not going to happen. Sorry. So what top-notch coach is going to come to Big D? Bill Cowher? Doubt it. John Gruden? Doubt it. Brian Billick? Doubt it. Because Jerry's too hands on. Unless Jerry releases the reins, he's not no no top notch coach is gonna coach in Big D. And Cowboys fans, get used to the mediocrity, because it's gonna continue to happen. So it's gonna be a long season in Dallas. And they had all types of talent. They had all indications pointing they could be the first team to host the Super Bowl to be in the Super Bowl. Well, not now. So, anyway, it's going to be an interesting rest of the eight games and into the playoffs. Next up, I definitely want to talk about um, just looking forward to the baseball season. I know baseball just ended. And I know the San Francisco Giants are the World Series champs. But you have one of the biggest free agents out there in Cliff Lee. And the Yankees have definitely made an offer and met with him uh, this past week. GM Brian Cashman flew down to Arkansas to meet with Cliff Lee and his family to reassure him of different questions he may have, concerns. And it's been reported that he's going to make, give him a five-year deal worth about 150, 160 mil, but nothing's actually being put on paper. But that's just the reports that I'm hearing. The Yankees have two top priorities. Sign Cliff Lee and re-sign Derek Jeter. Those are your two top priorities. One is not more important than the other. So Yankees, if you want to win another title, I I strongly suggest that you you sign Cliff Lee and sign Derek Jeter. We'll be right back.